for fun today. Maybe it's joining in with fabulous Faye and myself in the five minute fitness segment. Life is too short not to have some fun. Welcome to Over 50 So What? I'm Carol O'Halloran. The first segment today is an important one, financial elder abuse. We're talking to Louise from Respecting Seniors Network with a focus today on how you can change the power of attorney for yourself or for your loved ones if you're not getting the results you want. To finish the show, we're having fun, fun, on a trip to Echuca with Link and members of our Chinese community. Enjoy the show. Today we're speaking again with Louise Singleton from Respecting Seniors Network. Hi Louise, welcome back to Over 50 So What? Thanks Carol, thanks so much for having me again. Louise, you're very passionate about this area and you're very close to your grandmother too, so you know, you really want to look out after our older population. Definitely, um, I was really close with my grandma, one of my favourite people in this world. When my grandmother got older, um, she experienced dementia so she had a power of an attorney who thought they were doing the best for them. They genuine, genuinely really really cared about her and her health and well-being. The carer's beliefs though um, may not have been in the best interest of my nana and despite me voicing my opinions and I was very close with my nana you know so like I knew that this wasn't right for her. Looking back I think that if I had have known I could have gone to see uh, a lawyer or, or seeked some free legal advice, broke student back then, so yeah. um, <laughs> you know just there's so many free legal services out there as well so I, I probably could have called Seniors Rights Victoria had I known about them, I could have accessed some legal advice had I known that it was, there, out there. it was it was not right like what was going on was not right but I wish that I had have known if I had have got some advice called some of these services so Louise if someone's uh, appointed a power of attorney yep. for their health or their finances uh, it's in their will and then later on they're using that power of attorney but they're not ha happy with the way that person is managing their affairs what can they do they can do stuff they it's can not, do stuff it's <laughs> not the end of um, it's not the end you're of the locked line in. This you're is not locked in Office of the Public Advocate. You can give them a call. So Office of the Public Advocate and you can get advice on how you can move your power of attorney to someone else. Yeah. 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 In this video it'll explain it all. I've signed a power of attorney, now they have control and there's nothing I can do about it. It's often thought that once a power of attorney is signed it can't be withdrawn. This is not true. If a person has the legal capacity to do so, which means among other things that they understand the implications of what they are doing, they can cancel a power of attorney at any time. Even if the person does not have this capacity, if their attorney is not making decisions in line with the person's wishes or their well-being, there are steps that can be taken to address this. Lawyers can give advice to help with this process. Now. If you're observing something going on in your own family, like if someone's been um, appointed power of attorney and they're not doing a good job, or you've noticed a family member in your own family may be taking financial advantage of someone, or maybe it's you've got a, a friend who's told you they're, they're having trouble with their family members, what would you suggest for someone about helping someone else in that situation? Definitely, I would say um, starting the conversation is hard. So trying to not offend them as much as, because it might come off as offensive or they might feel a little bit attacked um, as well. But researching support services in the area, like local ones, that could be really helpful. Uh, taking them to events, if you see any come up, just be like, oh, I'm going to uh, this free legal advice event um, in two weeks, would you like to come? And, and I think the good things about that is that they're often like safe environments, non-judgmental and they can take some handout information if it's available. But um, if you're not sure about what to do, I would suggest calling Seniors Rights Victoria, tell them what you're suspecting is happening um, or if it's physical, oh, again you could contact the Orange Door or the police and get some advice from them. 
how do we raise our awareness of what really is financial abuse, emotional abuse or elder abuse as a whole? How do we help spread the message to the wider community so that they know what's acceptable and what's not acceptable? Really great question, Carol. I think by staying a personal um, to protect yourself from elder abuse, firstly, I think staying empowered and um, understanding legal documents, or not so much understanding legal documents because uh, they're difficult, but going to events and, and creating awareness um, your, like within yourself. So having the conversation, um, normalising elder, not, not normalising elder abuse, but no. knowing that it's out there and understanding what it looks like can really help erase elder abuse because people are becoming aware of what it can look like. Um, so also understanding how you can be in control of the decision making in your life um, and having those legal documents that keep you in control and keep you empowered about knowing what documents you need, setting up a will and having your wishes met and what you want, um, planning for your future that kind of thing can definitely help erase abuse because you know about it and, and you've got it in writing what you want. And the other thing is I think a lot of people think, oh, elder abuse is not going to happen to me because I'm not 80 yet. Mm -hmm. But we did make the point when we last spoke that it's 55 plus and, and you may be experiencing some form of elder abuse, you know, at that young age. Absolutely. It doesn't just, you don't wake up 80 one day and just start experiencing it, it can happen at 55 and over. Um, just because it is from, you know, people, elder abuse is a form of family violence, but it can happen um, from a loved one, from a relative. So, you know, they don't just wake, wake up and you've got new relatives that are going to cause you abuse. It can be just any relative, any adult child, mm. um, friend, neighbour. It's, it's funny because a lot of people assume that elder abuse happens in a nursing home from a random stranger and that does occur but the most common forms are from a loved one. Well thanks for helping us to raise a level of awareness to the viewers that are watching so I think we're all going to be richer for your good work getting the message out there so everyone really understands what elder abuse is and how diverse it is and how easily it can slide in to elder abuse mm. behaviours. And that's the other thing, Carol, too, is that most abuse um, happens and it can turn into other forms of abuse. So it could start at small financial abuse, um, taking a little bit of money here and there, and then that person, it, the greed, and the entitlement kind of becomes bigger and bigger, and then it can turn into um, physical forms of elder abuse or neglect, you know, because as well as they're taking an older person's money or their family member's money, then they, they could be neglecting other medicines or something that they need because they don't have enough money to buy them so yeah like just it often overlaps so I don't think a lot of people be aware there's a lot of free legal advice out there oh, isn't there yes yeah. so most community centers should have some kind of information on where you could access like some free legal advice um, down here we have the Peninsula Community Legal Center and they do amazing events around here, so if you're from here, keep an eye out, follow them on Facebook too, maybe, because sometimes there's a free coffee there. Um, <laughs> Jolly good. Yes. <laughs> free coffee's always good. Free coffee, free legal <laughs> advice, what more could you want? <laughs> so if people want to know more about Respecting Seniors Network, where do they go? You can follow us on Facebook. There's also the Respecting Seniors Network.org.au. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for your time, Louise, and thanks for your good work. Thank you, Carol. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?